Ani pojo me ke se kwentin stendin ne kas no me ko se pinken tunji ate ka me ken tutim My English name is Karen Dannenman I'm from Trout Lake and my clan is a whitefish The teachings that I'm going to be doing right now are the medicine wheel teachings and the medicine wheel um is divided into four different compartments and when i use a medicine wheel i don't draw solid lines to um separate the four parts of the circle i use a dotted line because to me that dotted line represents how all knowledge all relationships everything is all interconnected and interdependent and the relationships are all over so um the um top of the circle is the east and to the right is south to the bottom is west and to the left is north and there are colors that represent each of the directions where i come from east is represented by the color red south is black west is yellow and north is white um in many other communities and other nations they don't use the same color system that we do and that's okay the way that we are taught how to use a medicine wheel is dependent on each community each nation of people and for us this is a way it makes sense to us right now it might change next year next month but this is a way it makes sense to us right now okay so east is at the top and red is at the top and there are five circles that we're going to be using in these teachings and we may not refer to them all in this first uh, set of teachings but in the smallest circle the inside circle the most inner circle it's about the four aspects of self the four parts of each one of us and to the top it's about our spiritual lives to the right it's about our emotional lives and to the bottom to the west it's about our mental or psychological part and then to the left to the north it's about our physical part the next circle is the four aspects of our collective lives to the east it's about our cultural life to the south it's about our social lives and to the west it's about our political lives and to the north it's about our economic lives the way that we provide food shelter and clothing to ourselves our families our communities our nations the next circle the third circle from the inside it's the four rascals now these rascals are also a part of each one of us we all have these four rascals but culturally we are taught to deal with these rascals in often very different ways the um, rascal to the east to the top is feeling inferior and we've always we've all felt inferior at some part in our lives it's it's um that's the rascal that when you feel like you're not as good as the next guy the other person is way prettier than we are or dresses better or has a nicer car that's the rascal feeling inferior the rascal to the south is jealousy and again we've all felt jealousy at some point it's a way that we deal with the jealousy that's different the um, the rascal to the west is resentment and resentment is about anger that has not been dealt with and it's anger that's been turned inward and stays within us and it um 
makes things very, very difficult for us, makes things very difficult, difficult in our relationships. The um, rascal to the north is not caring. And that's about not caring about your family. It's not caring about the land. It's not caring about any of the animals. It's about just not caring except for oneself. And that's the rascal um, that brings about things like greed, where you try to collect and hoard and just keep and keep and keep instead of sharing. Okay, these four rascals, we have to learn how to live with them or else they can take over our lives and destroy our lives. They can destroy our relationships. So we have to learn how to deal with them. And one of the ways that we do do that is by acknowledging their presence in us. Okay, We don't call them evil. They're, we call them rascals because we have to learn how to live with them. So um, um, later on, another session can be about the four rascals and we can spend about a, a half an hour to do that. Um, the circle, the outer circle is the four life givers. To the east, it's about, it's the earth. To the south, it's fire. To the west, it's water. And to the north, it's air. And each one of these life givers are also, are also teachers. And we can learn so many things from each of these life givers. And again, that's a session on its own that we, will, we may do eventually. The circle, the second circle from the in, from the outside, sorry, is a circle of the four, uh, this is a relationship circle. It's about the things that are important for healthy relationships. So to the top of the page, the circle, um, relationships are about respect to the south relationships are all about rights in this relationship in any relationship what are our rights opposite of that to the north relationships are about responsibilities what are our responsibilities in our relationships in each relationship that we have to the bottom, to the west, relationships are about reciprocity. It's about the give and take in every relationship. So for example, if you and your partner have a relationship where you're doing all the giving and your partner is doing all the taking, that's not a very healthy relationship. And we have to find some way of balancing that. So, so that's what reciprocity is, that there has to be that balance in the give and take in relationships. So I want to start this session by talking about our relationship with the land and what are our, um, what are all the different ways that we show respect for the land. Okay. So we can, um, talk about things like in our relationship to the land, it's really important for us not to litter. If we have if we have garbage in our hands, we put it in the garbage. We don't just throw it on the ground. We don't throw it in the water. We take it with us and um, take care of it in a proper way. Also, when we're out on the land and we see garbage, it's good for us to pick up that garbage and take it to a place where garbage is disposed of. In the old days, we didn't really have to worry so much about that because everything that we used came from the land. And when we, when we were done using something, we would either use it for something else, change it a bit and use it for something else, or else we put it back on the land or in the water in a ceremonial way. And today it's um, it's very different. A lot of our things are plastic and cellophane and we have to deal with that. 
in a very different way than our people had to deal with things that was that they no longer used. Um, so when when we do this exercise of what are the different ways that we show respect for the land, we can fill up at least four flip charts of a list of ways that we show respect for the land. One of the ways that we show respect for the land is to listen to the land. We acknowledge the land as our first teacher. And I like to tell the story about when I was working with my little grandson when he was about three years old. And he always came in the bush with me when I went harvesting. And he often carried the tobacco for me. And he often was the one to put the tobacco down. Well, this one time we went into the bush and we were um, collecting willow, willow trees and willow branches. And so he carried the tobacco, but he was running up on the trail ahead of me. And I saw this really nice clump of willow trees beside me. So I called him back and I said, Shane, can you come back, bring the tobacco? So he comes running back and he just stands there and he looks up at the willow trees and he just stands there. And for some reason, I didn't say anything. I just waited. So then he turns to me and he says, no, no, Kukum, these trees aren't ready to die yet. Come on, let's keep going. So off he went and I just followed very quietly and just really thinking. And then he's calling me, he says, Kukum, Kukum, hurry. So I catch up to him and he says, Kukum, these trees say you can cut them down. So I said, okay, can you put the tobacco down? And he said, no, no, Kukum, they want you to put the tobacco down. So he hands me the tobacco and, and he says, and they also want you to tell them what you're going to use them for. So that's what I did as I was, as I was thanking the trees for the gift of their lives. I told them what I was going to be using them for. But I always remembered that that was my first lesson of somebody hearing the trees communicate with them. And um, since that time I've learned, and I've learned that yes, I have to be quiet and I often have to be still. And uh, since that time, many, many times, I have been in communication with different relations on the land. And um, I, after that happened with my grandson, I spoke to some elders and I told them about it, and I, and I asked them, uh, um, is, this, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And he said, yes, of course. He said, when you're putting tobacco down, that's a time for your prayer. That's a time for you to ask for permission to take them. And if they're not agreeable to that, they will let you know. And um, so that, that was um, that was a huge lesson for me, and that lesson I pass on to you, as I'm sure your elders do. Okay, I, I want to give another example of how we show respect for the land, and uh, that's about the language that we use. And even if we, if we use the English language, we can still use the language in a very respectful way. So, for example. When we're meeting with MNR, MNR talks about natural resources. They say natural resources, and sometimes they'll say renewable natural resources or non-renewable natural resources. And those words are very foreign to us. The words that we use when we talk about the land, when we talk about the animals and the birds and the trees and the grass and the rocks and the fish, the insects, the snakes and reptiles, all of them are our relations. And when we refer to them all together, we say all our relations. And even in our ceremonies, we talk about all our relations. 
because that's what the relationship is about. When we say all our relations, that already presupposes there's a relationship there. When MNR says natural resources, that's a very different relationship. That relationship is based on ownership. So um, following the same example, when um, MNR talks about um, the trees, they talk about the, what they get from the trees like lumber and they they talk about the chips and they talk about the, the pulp that they make from there and they call these products. Okay. So for us, when we get a gift from a tree, that's what we call it, it's a gift. When we get hide from a moose, and from that hide we make moccasins, we make mitts, we can make snowshoes, we make drums. There are so many gifts from a moose, hundreds of gifts from the moose. I could do a whole day workshop on gifts from the moose. And that's the difference. That, the, the words that we use, gifts and not products, it's a very different feeling even we get when we use those words. When we say all our relations, it's a very different feeling than when we say natural resources. It's a very different feeling that we get when we say gifts than when we say products. So, and, and that's what um, uh, the importance of language is. We call the land our mother. In our language, we call the land Ningemenon, our mother. Some, sometimes we say Kimamanan, our mother. In English, in MNR words, they call the land um, environment, they call the land crown land, they call the land uh, real estate, they call it all kinds of words that takes away from that relationship of the land being our mother. The words that MNR uses that's in the English language, those tend to disconnect us from the land. And the words that we use reconnect us to the land. They continually connect and reconnect us to the land. And that's the important thing. That's one of the most important relationships that we have to work on is our relationship to the land. Okay, so um, to uh, the south in the relationship circle, it's about our rights. And so again, we can go through a long list of rights. And so off the top of my head, I can say that we have a right to live on the land. We have a, a right to be on the land. We have a right to harvest from the land. We have to. We have a right to um, raise our families on the land. We have a right to be educated by the land. We have many, many rights on the land. Okay? But hand in hand with rights are responsibilities. So we go across the circle to the north which is about our responsibility. And for every right that we have, there's a responsibility. The responsibilities part of the circle, we can add everything that we talked about in the respect. Okay, so for example, we have a responsibility to, to take care of the land. We have the responsibility of not throwing garbage on the land, picking up garbage, not to pollute the land, not to pollute the water or the air. We have to take care of the land. We have to be caretakers, not just takers. We have responsibilities to teach our children. We have the responsibilities to teach each other. We have the responsibility to remind one another because we're, we can be forgetful. So for every right, there is a responsibility or maybe four or five responsibilities for every right. That's, what, that's um, where our ceremonies come in. 
Ceremonies are a way that we show respect for the land, but it's also a responsibility that is culturally ours. We have to learn what those ceremonies are and we have to learn the purpose. So um, one of the main things about ceremonies is we have to learn to be grateful. Gratitude is very, very important in our culture and everything that we do on the land has to be done in gratitude. Okay, and the flip side of gratitude is humility. One of the things about the circle is that um, no part of the circle is more important than another part. So that we as humans being in the circle of life, we are not more important than the, the beaver or the moose. We're not more important than the mosquitoes or the snakes or the frogs. Okay? We are all a part of the same circle. And it's our responsibility to understand that and appreciate that and to teach that. The West part of the relationship circle is about reciprocity. And reciprocity is about the give and take in any relationship. When I take from the land, I give something back. And sometimes that giving is in the form of tobacco. Sometimes that uh, giving is in the form of a drum song. Maybe if I've killed a moose, then I will sing a song to that moose. The first thing that I do when I kill a moose is I cut the bell off and I hang it on a tree. All different parts of the moose has to be used. Okay? We can't waste any part of it. All of it has a use for us. It's a gift to us. There are um, many different ways that uh, we can show reciprocity. We, we must understand that we have to teach what we know, but we also have to understand that all our lives we have to be learners. We'll, we'll never stop learning until our last breath. We share what we have with those who need it, and we are caretakers, not takers. Okay, so in the reciprocal relationship, we remember that we are also, we also have to be grateful and also humble. In this first session about the medicine wheel, the first circle that we talked about was a relationship circle. And in anything that we do after this, we'll refer back to the relationship circle. We can do a different session about the four aspects of self and at the same time work with the four aspects of our collective lives. That's, that would be our next session. The session after that um, can be about the four rascals and we could spend a whole uh, session uh, learning and teaching about the four rascals and then um, maybe an another session about the four life givers and um, as we go through these five circles it becomes uh, it'll become very re very real to us it'll show us the very practical side of using the medicine wheel as a teaching tool and as a learning tool